Hi guys, we're excited to have you here. I'm Victor. I'm Robin. And we're going to shed some light a little bit on optimizing your health and happiness. And I have news for you. It's actually very simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. So before we get started on that, let's do a little background on who we are, because there's a chance that you don't know how uh, um, famous we are. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have been in the coaching business for about 30 years now. Uh, Victor and I met when I was still in high school and he was 19 and he started a, as a personal trainer that same year. Yeah. And then we opened up our own personal training facility the next year. And we've pretty much been health, fitness, strength coaches uh, since then. Jeez. And now we're pushing 50. Yeah. So it's almost <laughs> been 30 years. We've seen a lot of trends come and go. We've seen a lot of changes, not only in our own lives and experienced our own um, amazing transformations of both mind and body, but also seen a huge shift in culture and in health and wellness um, particularly here in the United States. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not for the better either. Uh, when about almost eight years ago, we did have a brick and mortar gym where we were, had one room was teaching gymnastics to kids and the other room was uh, all personal training. And about that time, I was getting a little restless and wanted to explore and see the world with my family and just the idea of sticking out the grind uh, day in and day out and working really hard just for a mortgage and a car payment just didn't seem like it aligned with uh, what would make me happy. And that's really what started us from being such big experts in fitness. health and <laughs> fitness and moved. We quickly evolved to being um more of like life coaches and happiness coaches and trying to integrate the two. And so that's why this uh, webinar is really about your holistic approach to health and happiness, um, that we don't want it to be just about uh, ripped abs or how you can bench more. While those are still, you know, things that are okay to pursue, we're trying to look for ways that people can truly enjoy their lives in this holistic, this integrated mind, body, and spirit practice. Yeah. And look, it's, it's really the cards are stacked against you. Yeah. It's really not fair. And we'll get into that, why that's not fair. But society, the world, um, the food, it's all stacked against you. So I personally have a lot of experience with my own um, anxiety and have my own journey. And I can tell you unequivocally that you're not alone. It can feel like you're alone, but we're going to shed some light on some simple steps that can help you turn it all around. So to start with, we want to talk about anxiety seems to be the number one thing that brings people to this point to be watching this webinar. Um, overall, if I like to be like, hey, let me tell you how to live your best life ever. And most people are like, I just want to stop feeling anxious. And I understand. I um, completely empathize. We're not going to go too far into Victor's own journey with adrenal fatigue here. If you go to robinandvictor.com. We have all of his adrenal fatigue videos there that can go deeper into that. But really, this covers the solution for that anyways. So if you're experiencing anxiety, we understand, well, one, how painful it is, but two, like how normal it is today to have anxiety. But the problem is, is that there's this normalcy bias that really is working against you because while anxiety we look at it is a gift it is such a gift that you have that symptom because it's your body telling you that something is off and we like to teach people that you know when you have these symptoms it's um such a great thing that when you can reframe them into the context of your body sending you a signal early on that something's out of balance so when you do have this anxiety if you choose to listen to it or if you have other markers, if you go into the doctor and have high blood pressure or high cortisol, instead of hitting the panic mode and going down the medical um, ah. avenue path, thank you, it's really an opportunity here to step back and go, well, where am I out of balance? And that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to go over a list of symptoms. And these symptoms, quite honestly, like, like we said, we've been in the industry for 30 years. These were not normal. They're normal today. These symptoms that uh, we're going to read through real quick are all things that most people feel, and we're not reading through them so that you feel shame or guilt, but so that you understand, one, that you're not alone, that these do seem normal, and two, don't let them be normal. Like, normal is not 
Um, just because a lot of people have them or just because they experience them does not mean that you are stuck living in these. We don't have these, but when Victor had adrenal fatigue, a lot of these were common. Yeah, a lot of the, the symptoms you hear that you will describe and Robin, I'll read in just a moment. It's the human body is this amazing thing, but when one thing gets out of whack, it has a chain reaction on the body systems and it has to struggle to get back into homeostasis. So you can look at your anxiety in a number of different ways. And if you're looking at this and you're already frustrated, I want you to hang on to the entirety of this webinar and go through the little bit of like, you get through that trigger, like oh, they, they just don't know what it's like to, to, to go through this. Hold on, I promise you by the end, you'll have some clarity and you'll actually feel better. But think about having anxiety is not um, not having uh, alignment and not having, but also having the body's trying to rebalance itself. And that's its function, trying to get your knock on the door, like, hello, pay attention to me. Right. So here's some of the symptoms real quick. And I'm on, Victor will tell you at the end of this list how many of these symptoms he had at one point and how many he has now. So wired and tired, or you have trouble getting out of bed in the morning. You feel the best after dinner. You have trouble falling asleep or getting to bed be before 1030, and you often wake up between 1 and 4 a.m. You have food intolerances, GI distress, irritable bowel syndrome, leaky gut, low testosterone, libido's off, hormone imbalance some significant past trauma, you're overworked, um, to, you overwork to the point of exhaustion and have trouble relaxing, anxious, depressed, personality swings. You rarely do things for fun or for play, recreation, gain weight easily, or you can't drop weight no matter how little you eat. You're relying on caffeine to get through the day or you need a nap to get through the day. You experience brain fog, poor memory, crave salt, sugar, get low blood sugar or hangry often, uh, a low tolerance for stress, low motivation, low productivity, trouble in your relationships, allergies or environmental sensitivities, urinate frequently or have trouble holding on to your water, you feel on edge or jumpy to any loud noises. Another way to look at it is you feel like you're always on high alert or constantly scanning for potential threats. Trouble getting pregnant, irregular cycles, PMS, earlier difficult menopause, get dizzy when standing up fast or have low blood pressure, experience vertigo, eye floaters, ringing in the ears, light sensitivity, need to wear sunglasses outside, headaches, migraines, tight calves, Achilles tendon, or issues just in general with the feet, them being really cold, sweaty, flat, sore, flat's a weird one, I know, um, loose sad. ligaments, uh, ligament strain, sore back, neck, knees, or other joint pain, tendonitis, rotator cuff issues, bursitis, arthritis, chronic pain, asthma, acne, thin, dry skin, eczema, psoriasis, skin rashes, dandruff, white patches, clammy, cold hands or feet. You get sick or the cold or the flu more than normal, which really should not be more than once a year maybe twice, and it takes longer than two days to recover. Now, there are some exceptions on that last one because there are some weird toxins floating around, which we're not going to get into. But if how many of those did you experience back in 20, All 2009? All but one. I, I seem to get, I didn't have any problem getting pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I, and why I laugh right now is because I literally went into the doctor's office and listed off my symptoms. He's like, you can't have all of those symptoms. I'm like, no, 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 I have, these are the things I have. It's like, I can't treat all of those. I need to treat one thing at a time. And I, I don't know why a light bulb didn't go off then. Like, oh, he just wants to treat the sore achy feet and the inability to hold on water and the weight gain issue, like thyroid, this, take this, four different medications they wanted to recommend it. Anyway. How many do you experience now? Um, well, none. <laughs> May, I, I probably you I know mean, if I get really out stressed out if I get stressed out especially in the actually in the process of making uh, this webinar it's actually created a significant amount of stress for me because I really want people to understand the complexity of what's going on in their lives and it creates a little bit of a of a stress that I that I did have you know craving for salt <laughs> yeah for example Okay, so what we're going to go through in this, the next uh, 30 minutes or so, is a realistic approach. And I think that's really important because one of the things that, you know, we run this um, 
this brand together with coaching and helping people achieve health and figure out, you know, strategies for life. But we also run an adventure travel blog. And sometimes I say to Victor, it's just such a better environment on the travel and adventure because everybody just seems so nice. And quite honestly, the health and fitness industry feels like you're buying a used car. And we don't want it to feel like that. We really, truly want to help people. We want to help as many people as possible. And while it is a simple approach, it is not easy. We, we are very aware that <laughs> that the things that we're going to ask you to do are simple, but that it's getting yourself to do them is not easy. And we're going to talk about why that is and a solution for that. The problem is the alternative, that if you don't choose to do something about this now, if you experience those symptoms, those early on symptoms are great red flags to make some of these lifestyle changes, preferably all these lifestyle changes. But if you ignore them, then you end up out of nowhere in the ER for panic attacks or worse anxiety or cancer scares or a whole bunch of different autoimmune issues. Yeah. That could be stopped right now very easily. And it's, it's what people don't want to tell you. And this is a difficult conversation sometimes for us to have with a lot of people that we potentially have worked with off and on is that, Hey, you know, you're trying to show loving compassion for them. Like, hey, you can do a little more, you can do a little more, but you can kind of see it, them stepping towards, progressively towards a decline and more dis-ease, right? Yeah. So what we're going to present is an actual plan. These, this works. We we live it. We've gone through it from um, when Victor was feeling really, really bad. I mean, we're talking really bad. I know it's hard. If you only know him now, it's hard to believe, but the turnaround was huge. And that if you implement this, you have a solution for the rest of your life. Like I look at my grandma who's 95 years old because she pretty much implements most of these things in that we talk about here. Um, she probably doesn't do as much of one or two of them, but overall the food part and the play part is so big in her life that she's still at 95, drives herself to the gym, drives herself to the beach, goes, drives to Trader Joe's to get her $9 um, thing of organic eggs like the amount that this stuff works for the rest of your life you will have so little problems if you can implement these so it makes it worth it and so as we about to broach and dive in this is the part this is where you should have your notebook you should have your water you should cut out other distractions silence your phone and allow yourself to immerse yourself into the accumulation of almost 60 years individually because robin and i are extremely uh, unique we have we we certainly come from the same direction but the way we've come to some of these things um and the stories that we'll share with you can literally be that light bulb that goes off and if you're like me you need those light bulb moments to stick to and like oh man that's me yes this is on, we're on the right track yeah so the last thing to remember is it's, you know, what we're presenting here does require consistency and aligning with SMART goals. And so consistency kind of speaks for itself that you need to, you can't expect to have drastic changes in one week. You're not going to lose 30 pounds in one week. If you're looking for that solution, it's somewhere else. That's not what we're, what we're trying to share with you right here. Honestly, if you want to lose 30 pounds in a really short amount of time, go on a water fast. You probably like, uh, take care of a lot of these things. It's just, this is one way to do it without having to go so extreme to go into a water fast. And the other thing is that we're plagued in a situation where the entirety, over half of our population is obese and the anxiety numbers are climbing well past 20 to 30% in certain populations over the last few years. This is a glaring red flag that no one is really addressing. And so like, oh, here the fitness industry is, fitness and gyms, it's raking in millions upon millions of dollars, and yet the vast majority of individuals are not having an understanding of what it takes to be healthy. And so the idea of SMART goals, um, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, is that it's really important to choose your correct why. Like if you're doing, if you're going to implement a plan like this, it's because you really truly value yourself and you want right. to see yourself thrive in the future. That would be a smart goal. I value myself. I want to be able to enjoy my kids, my grandkids, my friends, my spouse, whatever that is, those smart goals, and then be able to put them on a realistic timeline, 
be able to um, see like measuring things. Yes, it's important that the scale goes down if you're overweight, but it's also your your zest for life, your ability to enjoy the relationships, to be able to wake up excited every day. That's part of it, making a smart goal. If because we have that normalcy bias that tells us, well, everyone has anxiety. So if my anxiety is not as bad as their anxiety, I must be doing good. Or it seems like everyone has high blood pressure. Well, I'm not as fat as that person. My blood pressure must not be that bad. If right. we're compar comparing to the bottom rung, then, then those aren't going to be smart goals. We need to be able to stop and like ask ourselves, where do we want to be? Where are you going to thrive the most? And, you know, we're both wearing our some swag while we record this. At some point, you have to be able to defy the norm and okay. go against what everyone else is like, you know, my instincts, but we have to teach you how to get to that instinct part. Okay. So Here for we the go. most part, if you are, have any of those symptoms, the number one thing we're going to start with is stopping the bleeding. Okay. You got to get in coaching. I use this analogy all the time. You got to get your head above water. Imagine that you're swimming in the ocean. You got to get your head above water, be able to tread water for a second and then pick an island to swim to. But what happens is people are so used to drowning. There's, there's so many anchors holding them down underwater that when they bring their head above water and they gasp for, for air, they think this must be living. It must be great. I can breathe. You know I have saying? relief. Yeah. I can, and, and it is important. And so I want you to, we're going to go through the stop the bleeding real quick, but think about how important it is this transition from stop the bleeding to what I just talked about smart goals, which we're not going to get really far into it because otherwise I'd be here for hours. We do that in another place, but stopping the bleeding is all about using those, those signals that you, the anxiety, the low blood pressure, the hangry, all of those as clues to what is really, what, what is causing me dis-ease or disharmony? What is out of balance? And while we have a lot of um, misinformation floating out there about what um, what makes people sick and like viruses and that these these things out there are going to attack you, it's not necessarily the truth. There's only four things that are really going to cause you to be out of balance, out of harmony, out of ease. You might take an acute injury, have an acute injury, like you take a fall or you go to into surgery. That's going to be an acute injury to the body starvation is a big one that's causing people to not um, be in harmony in their body. And that can be just lack of good nutrients. If you, um, GMO foods, extreme dieting, processed foods, that's literally, we're not putting the right stuff into our we're body. Yeah, Therefore, we're not nutrient dense. It's nutrient devoid. <laughs> right. And the next one is environmental poisons. And I encourage you to think of this in, in the way that you think of viruses. Because we think of viruses as these, like this germ theory, and you can watch um, lots of stuff from Dr. Tom Cohen and Dr. Andrew Kaufman on um, terrain theory versus germ theory. We don't need to get into that now, but environmental poisons are affecting you. You know, whether it's the glyphosate you're eating, it's on all, like so much of your food, the heavy metals, bad air or water, 5G, electromagnetic toxicity, lots of things are are attacking you in that way. It's just not necessarily maybe the way that you um, are used to framing it, okay? What we wanna talk about though is the fourth one, is that your thoughts, because this is a lot that's in your control. Now, acute injury, you could be very cautious through your life, but then what fun is that in that? So sometimes that's just things happen. Starvation is very much in your control. And while you couldn't limit your environmental poisons, you could also make yourself crazy Trying to eliminate every single poison That's in the right. environment. I know, I've tried. It's just too exhausting. I have to just let it go. And so what we can do is we can do stuff through our thoughts. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, so the thoughts end up being, and if you uh, follow any Gabor Mate um, and even Dr. Do Joe Dispenza, we talk about the root causes of disharmony in the human body being our emotions. Right. So we're going to get into that oh, real quick because everybody knows stress. So stress is any time our nervous system is in a fight or flight response. Stress is stimulated by negative emotions, but also by any external stimuli that requires our full attention. So when we have full focus, that can be a stress. And when we get into talking about flow state, that's 
definitely a stress, but it's a good stress as long as we're doing it in appropriate amounts of time. You probably are very familiar that when your body is um, being chased by a bear, which probably doesn't happen very often, if you were being chased by a bear, cortisol would be released. Uh, when we talk about when we go surf, sometimes you get this big rush of cortisol to get to the to the Adrenaline, lineup to like yeah. paddle out past the whitewash and not get uh, crushed by an incoming wave. And then you get out there and your heart rate comes down and that that is still stress. Cortisol is being released in those situations. But a lot of us live our life day in and day out as if we're being chased sure. by a bear or as if a 10 foot wave is about to crash on our head. And so that those type of things, we can all agree, we know what stress is, but it's important to think about because when Victor went in to, um, when he had really bad adrenal fatigue and he went to the doctor, they're like, they did say, ask about his stress. He's like, I'm not stressed. He was stressed. It just in a different, in a different way. way. And so I think the key ingredient to it, that is, how we each interpret stress, and as this next slide pops up, is completely unique and oftentimes rooted in something in our past. And so this kind of before we go into types of stress or how the stress is probably playing out for you, it's really important to recognize that your stress thought loop. So when you think of, a, when you think of something that's stressful and you're worried, your stress your, your cortisol response goes up. When your cortisol goes up, your genes actually start down-regulating. So when your genes down-regulate, so does your immune function. Okay, so we can see how just these negative thought patterns are going to cause more cortisol. More cortisol causes our genes, our immune system to down-regulate. But the opposite also happens. So cue in on that. Like even if you stop listening right now, if you just held elevated emotions 10 minutes minimum held those emotions your genes are going to upregulate your immune system is going to upregulate your stress levels go down so it becomes a really really important cycle that's why we um that's why we've moved in our coaching so far from just bench pressing and deadlifting and eating spe a specific way to restriction really and starting getting... with understanding stress. So one of the things that stress um, plays out, I think most dominantly, because we do have our swag that says defy the norm. And I always say that it's the norm is to be so busy. It's like we are valued for being busier than our neighbor or busier than our friends or busier than our siblings. We we wear this badge of pride for being busy. Okay? We've trained ourselves to fill every minute of our time with being or feeling productive. Okay, But rarely is health and happiness ever found on this hamster wheel. So think about it for a second. Is there a chance that you have gotten to a point right now in your life where your, your identity is how busy you are? Oh man, I'd love to get together for dinner, but actually, I'm just so busy. We hear it a lot. I'm just so busy. And we used to be like that. We're, we're not here to tell you to live in an RV by any means, but we are here to tell you that health and happiness requires downtime, that in order to get your genes to upregulate and so that you don't have these symptoms and so you're not stuck in these um, cycle of, of stress and thought and negative emotions, you have to reframe this identity addiction to being busy. Yeah, you're good. Another way is, unfortunately, your ego is sabotaging you. And your ego wants to constantly maintain control. It does not want to um, lose power, let's say. And so in order to do that, it creates these stories. And Victor already mentioned uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, but that's another good resource to listen to about how much our brain lives in the past and takes things that happened in the past and actually kind of dramatizes the story around it. And then we keep thinking about that story and replaying it. And before long, we think that that story is truth. And not only that, every day, our future self, our current state is living in that past story instead of creating a new story. Yeah. And I just wanted to add a little bit, having been through, have a, you know, significant trauma in my past, 
I actually sometimes joke with Robin because some of the visions or memories that I have, I almost feel like, did, did I, is that real? Did I make that up? And it's partially because of the ego is trying to make sure that you're feeling a specific way. And the more and more I sit in that space, the more I go, wait, is that real? And let's face it, we talked about that. The previous slide talked about thoughts. Well, if the vast majority of our thoughts are, are subconscious, it raises the question in our ego sabotaging, like what's going on below the surface? Yeah, keep in mind, you know, 90 to 95% of your thoughts are subconscious, meaning you're not really aware of them. And when we can bring them to the surface and then notice like, oh yeah, that is what I was thinking. That is, that's crazy. I didn't realize that this thought that I wasn't aware of was actually dictating why I was so addicted to this status of this job or this house or this car, or all right. these other things. The other thing though, to keep in mind is your emotions aren't true either. And while it is super important to be emotionally aware, we also want to recognize that our emotions are often lying to us because of the last two slides. Our emotions are highly tied to the ego's defense and our emotions are often representative of a story we're telling ourselves from the past that might not be all the way true. So if you are somebody who notices or experiences highs and lows in their emotional state or get stuck in negative thought patterns that might spiral out of control, or if you feel this constant sense of impending doom or sadness, I want you to recognize that it might not be true. While you do feel that, it could be that your ego has hijacked your thoughts and your emotions. And yes. Yeah. And so what ends up happening with our organ systems is that we start talking to our organ systems via our hypothalamus. And this is just a little quick physiology to kind of keep you, make sure you're um, understanding that you, you speak to your brain, your brain speaks to your organs and your organs eventually start speaking back to your brain. So that mood that you've been in at some point trained your body to respond to is now on a negative feedback loop where it's like, okay, we'll just keep them in this heightened sense. Absolutely. Um, and that's why we say you're, you're really wired to fail. Uh, the brain has a five times negativity bias, meaning it's five times more likely to hold on to a negative memory or experience than a positive one. I'm going to use an example. Victor and I were talking today about going skiing. Now, Victor skied once or twice before, but it wasn't a great experience. And last time we were in the snow, he tried snowboarding and it was a horrible experience. So right now, when he, when I ask him questions, hey, you want to go skiing? It's kind of, eh, nah, that's not, I don't really want to go skiing because it takes five times the amount of effort to remember maybe a positive run that he made down that might have been 20 years ago when his brain's remembering five times more emotion there's five times more significance to the fall that happened a year ago. That we're designed to, re to remember more sticks than carrots. So what we have to do in order to offset that is we have to start implementing the um, carrots. Like we have to actively, that's why gratitude journal is so powerful because when we take the time to actually notice the positive things, we're ingraining it into our brain. And if we do it with repetition over and over, then it starts sending a new message through the hypothalamus and into the organs. And then you start to re rewrite your story. And then the last one is, Victor's an expert at this one because I always <laughs> feel like you have the amygdala hijack, right? Well, our amygdala is the part of the brain that senses, that senses danger. And it is in someone that has post-traumatic stress a soldier that comes back from um, war, their amygdala is hyperactive to the point where they can't, they're having, every time they get to a stop sign, they think someone's gonna blow up their vehicle. And so it's wired to like perceive, chronically perceive danger. The problem is we're living in a time where amygdala has been hijacked, but we haven't, we don't know it because we're in wartime. We're now reacting to phones on a constant. If someone sends you a text message, you're jumping at that. Um, a simple thing is like, you know, text someone in a public setting. 
and watch every single person react in a, in a rapid rate and like grab their phone. And so the amygdala um, starts to get wired and they're actually noticing now that the amygdala in a lot of people is overactive and growing because they're so acutely paying attention to danger. And certainly over the last three years, we have seen the amygdala get hijacked by news and propaganda and scare tactics to keep you scared and inside. Well, of course, you're going to be worried about nothing at all, even when you're laying in bed. Yeah. So the big take home with these few slides is just is not to feel guilty. It's if anything, the opposite. I want you to have compassion for yourself and realize it's not your fault. But now that you know that there is some science and on robinandvictor.com, Victor has a lot more videos on the science behind this. But now that you know that, oh, wait, my thoughts could be making me sick or causing these symptoms. And my thoughts are kind of taken, have been taken over by my ego and from my past that has a story that's not even necessarily true. And that that's also triggering emotions that maybe aren't completely true. And that my brain's wired to keep me remembering sticks over carrots. Then you have a little bit more compassion towards, oh, I didn't do anything wrong, but now I have a chance to fix this. Yeah. And so Victor and I talk a lot about chakras. Um, I just want to talk, touch real quick on two chakras because for the most part, if you're experiencing anxiety, it's because of a blockage in this root chakra and the sac uh, sacral chakra. And these are your bottom two chakras, your bottom two energy hubs. And if you're blocked down there, then there's a good chance you're not getting any flow up into your mind chakras. So that's going to complicate things even more. Um, some signs real quick on the block root chakra is like you might feel, like I said, anxiety, panic attacks, high alert, trouble making decisions, low self-esteem, needing a lot of affirmation, chronic low back pain, tightness in the legs and knees, fatigue, low energy, sluggishness, autoimmune issues. Hmm. Sounds a lot like what adrenal fatigue sounds like. Or anxiety. Yeah. Like a lot of the symptoms that go hand in hand with anxiety. So let's talk real quick about root chakra. If you were in my root chakra course or my uh, chakra healing course, I talk about the root chakra happens when we did not receive the support that we needed to in our early years of life. We did not feel safe and secure. Now, safe and secure doesn't mean that like you had knives pulled on you like Victor or that, you know, people were breaking into your house. Well, that could absolutely trigger a block root chakra. It could be if your parents were always struggling with money. It could be if your parents were so busy or um, stressed themselves or just not around that they weren't present and you didn't get to attach to them correctly like uh, Dr. Gabor Matei talks about in how we, if we don't receive this attachment that we need in our first seven years of life, we end up with a root a block root chakra. So again, not to use this to be a victim, but use it to realize, oh, this thing might've happened to me. It was out of my control. Now though, because I have the information, I have control of healing it because everybody can um, do the work. We can we can unblock root chakras. That part's not so hard. Um, when you're trying to unblock a root chakra and you don't understand why it got blocked in the first place, though, that becomes a much more difficult situation. Yes. So then, if we the root chakra and sacral chakra are very highly linked. Um, if you have a blocked root, it's really a good chance you have a block sacral also, but sacral is more of not so much of our physical safety or being like attached to a tribe necessarily. It's more of an individual self-worth. It's our individual sense of belonging, our individual sense of purpose, feel like we have, like that we matter in the world. So if it's blocked, you're going to have low self-worth, lack of motivation, lack of inspiration, lack of creativity, not even interested in creativity, addictive behaviors, inability to have intimate connections, depression, sluggishness, low libido, hormone imbalance, urinary and reproductive issues, hip injuries, autoimmune issues. Okay, so between these two slides, that pretty much covered almost everything in the first, first yeah. slides. And I would just only add to this that if it's if we want one more chakra up to solar plexus chakra, 
that's where the leaky gut's going to come in because that's the only thing we didn't talk about digestion in these two but it just goes to show that if we don't take care of this base level feeling of safety and security and get over our or not to say get over sorry but to address and identify our self-worth because you are worthy you have a goal here you have a purpose here on earth everyone does right but not everyone had somebody in their corner when they were younger saying hey what are you passionate about instead we were brought up in a society that says oh fit you go do fit in or you go you know go do all these steps down the down the ladder, get good grades in school, go to a good college, get a good job, get a good house, get all these things. And then, only then will you be worthy. Okay, I'll let you take over when we go to nutrition. Yeah. Um, identifying your source of stress is probably your first take, first step today is to think about like, is it your schedule? Look at your schedule. Like, do you not have gaps in your schedule to even breathe, <laughs> to think about? Yeah. Now, no, it's funny because it's absolutely true. We're living at a, people will literally work. You've heard work yourself to death. That is a thing. And it is you do not have time for health and well-being if you don't have time to set aside to unpack all this. Yeah. And I think a lot of people who are very driven, entrepreneurs, successful, they love the fact that it gives them purpose to wake up in the morning. But the but what we're trying to avoid is that those people who wait until they're in the hospital with a heart attack or don't understand why they're only 35 years old and have to be on uh, high blood pressure medications because that's not normal. It might be the norm right now, but that's not normal. So it's really important to check now those symptoms are a gift. Okay, so is your, is your source of stress maybe lack of boundaries? You know, if we... If we uh, didn't receive the attachment we needed as a child, a lot of times what we do is overgive and have an overactive heart chakra. And so we forget about the sense of self and we become obsessed with the people around us. And by doing that, that's a whole nother element of stress. If anything, it's like you're flying an airplane and you're not reading that you're, gas that you're out of gas and you're going to crash and your crash might look like a heart attack walking into or going into the ER for a whole bunch of things or, you know, going in for just labs and all of a sudden they're like, sorry, you have cancer. We don't want that to happen. So notice where your source of stress is now. Um, are you just addicted to stress? Are you addicted to drama? A lot of people, what do you call it? Cheese me. Yeah. A lot of people want to just stay wrapped up in the like, oh my gosh, did you see what they did? And I can't believe he said that. And are you addicted to control? I know for a long time, that was the hardest one for me to let go of was to just be like, like now I'm just like, whatever, we wing it. We have this rule of five. We might leave in five minutes, five days. But everything used to be like labeled, controlled to uh, the most that I, to the max. Is it your environment? Like, are you in a bad work environment? Are you in a bad neighborhood? Are you in a bad, do you have, you know, access to only bad water? Um, is it emotional? Are you, do you have, you know, a lot of trapped sadness, uh, trapped pain? You have nobody that you're getting to express or you haven't learned how to express your emotions. Remember, your emotions aren't true. However, they do have to be acknowledged. We use an analogy like if I see my phone sitting on the table, I do need to pick it up and go, oh, interesting. It's a phone. It has a blue case and then set it back down. Like we look at our emotions kind of the same thing. Oh, well, I'm feeling sadness. I think the sadness is because um, my husband didn't go skiing with me yesterday. <laughs> but then to set it down and go interesting that's sadness well i'm not sadness so i'm going to set that emotion down programming programming is a good one that we um whew, we could do a whole hour on that but programming is basically um understanding how your wiring um how your ego defended itself from the environment it was brought up in so victor was raised in a um very probably would you say chaotic childhood. He was the oldest of four. There was a lot going on. He really didn't have a lot of, there wasn't a lot of time to maybe be heard or um, seen or nobody's asking like, hey, how was your day? It was more like, hey, we got to get food on the table. And he knew he could get attention by being the helper. So he'd pitch in and cook and vacuum and clean up, right? right. And so that programming was established that, hey, if I help, people give me attention. 
I grew up with divorced parents. There was a lot of anger and fighting. And um, I learned from a young age that if I took control, if I was tough, nobody could hurt me. We use the simplest way to try to identify your programming is through your Enneagram, because there's a good chance, like 99.9% .9 chance that you're still running that program. Unless you've done massive healing or massive shadow work, there's a good chance that that program, that defense mechanism is still running. And maybe it's your relationships, like maybe you've been married for 25 years <laughs> and that might be it. Okay, we're going to get so Victor can take over because this is the part he loves more, the nutrition we're not really going to talk actually about supplements because then this presentation will be too long, but a little bit about nutrition. So new, everyone always wants to come in and for a long time, people would walk in and say, just tell me what to eat. Tell me what to eat to be successful or what do you eat? And we'll start to identify that. And all of a sudden they're, well, I, I can't do that. And some of the challenge associated with nutrition um, is that, we have so many personal beliefs around that. Like I deserve to not, I deserve that donut. I deserve that pizza. I deserve that cake. Well, where does that come from is, is a greater conversation. However, one of the greatest issues that I see with people today is associated with gut health. And we always think of the gut as the, another mind, right? As a gut instinct. And there's a reason we are disattached from our gut instinct is because our gut health has been destroyed. Now that aligns itself with our, our solar plexus chakra significantly. We've seen huge changes in, in dysbiosis, huge increases in leaky gut, huge increases in people's ability to have instincts associated with, this is what my gut is telling me. And I think it's all tied into this mind body, um, it, what we're talking about with the mind and the body. And so one of the easiest ways to start not only improving your health is to start taking sovereignty over what's going into your body. Now, that does not mean you cannot enjoy your food. As a matter of fact, now I enjoy my food more than ever. And I also actually have feelings and thoughts and instincts that kind of are pointing me in the direction. So one of the easiest things to start doing is number one, start limiting your irritants, the number of things you're putting in your body that could potentially be causing you to be disconnected from that intuition. And so fake processed food is the number one thing, but the big ones are pasteurized dairy, gluten, alcohol, those are big ones that are going to destroy and processed foods are going to destroy the gut lining of your, um, of your GI tract. Now, when I say that, it's important that you understand the food needs to stay inside the GI tract. And as it goes down the chain, that food needs to stay inside the GI, tra GI tract. Distress, bad food, bad programming, bad relationships all have a negative impact on the permeability of the GI tract. And so what starts to happen is that we have this beautiful villi in our GI tract that's much like a really shag carpet. It's really long and you can rub your toes in through it and it feels really good and soft. Over time, when you start introducing negative thoughts, neg bad food, um, lots of stress, that carpet, that shag carpet, turns into like astroturf where it has nothing and it starts to increase in permeability. And so the goal of our nutritional system, as you start to increase permeability, that gets into the bloodstream. Bloodstream creates a greater stress impact and starts to create more cortisol, which then has a negative feedback loop and causes more permeability issues, increasing autoimmune um, dysfunction, increasing stress reaction in the body. And so the goal of your gut health, improved gut health, is to help close up those gaps in the intestine and boost the body's natural ability to heal. Now, sourcing all of your food is probably um, the most important thing that you can do to start knowing. No, if it didn't come from a mom or a seed, you should probably not be eating it. But taking it a step further, you should also know how it was raised, right? So if you knew how it was raised, you'll know that it was it was grown um, 
um, without glyphosate, or it was taken care of in a pasture. If it was it was it was a, a chicken or a lamb or a cow or whatever that is. Um, now, one of the biggest parts, and I alluded to this, is that number four, the vagus nerve, and how it's connected. And so, negative negative thoughts, the big six, right? Shame, grief, sorrow, sadness, uh, and anger are all going to be communicated, are felt in your hypothalamus. Hypothalamus then travels through your vagus nerve, which travels down directly into all of your organ systems and namely into your GI system. And so if you're angry, you're going to send that to your stomach. And guess what? Food isn't digested well. And long term, that kind of communication to all of your organ systems are going to downregulate and destroy your gastrointestinal tract and lead to greater levels of stress. And as Hippocrates always said, death begins in the gut. And so one of the easiest things to do is that a, a, is the list here. And this is made in our Nutrition Made Simple course. Um, yeah, you can, these are, you can also get it in my ebook, uh, A Playful Life. It's free too on uh, robinrobledo.com. But these are your 10 rules, pretty much. Real food. Now I said pretty much because it's hard, like we said, with um, over the last 10 years, I think just the food sourcing is just so much, takes so much more effort to find good food. But like almonds, almonds are so heavily sprayed with glyphosate that it's make it so even for me to say real food, almonds are not necessarily great if they're sprayed with glyphosate. Okay, so real food, but but then you really want to be looking at, you know, if it's organic or you know, finding this, the, if it's sustainable farming, things like that. So anyways, real food comes from a mom or a seed. Uh, I put number two, even though it's not something you eat, but I think this is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Stop starving yourself. Like the, the number one thing you should change in your eating habits is to overeat the good things before you try to take out the bad. Just push out the bad by being full. Uh, no processed sugar. That's not to say there is a like small exception. We are extremely highly active. We have some sugar in our diet. It's not like it's a zero sugar, but if you're trying to heal the gut and you're probably not as active as us, I think the levels of anxiety as well. And yes. So you really at first want to eliminate all that sugar. Um, you also uh, have to keep in mind that this is your starting point when you have those symptoms. We don't have to stick to this as strictly as we heal our gut and more importantly as we start taking control over our thoughts and don't let our amygdala uh, run us off the cliff yeah. you know when i going back to nutrition just to give you some a little bit of back a little bit of a backstory or just just to give you hopefully like oh this stinks i don't want to eat all my favorite things i'm like when i was at my worst burnout i could eat like three things uh, Robin was spoon feeding me bone broth, <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> was feeding me bone broth soup and like fish and vegetables, but it was True. for a short period of time. And I was like, oh, there's something to this. And it just really motivated me to go to the next level. Like, no, 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 I don't want to touch that. Let's keep going. I actually have energy. Like he felt so bad that he just was, um, went full anti-inflammatory diet. So it was only fish, vegetables and bone broth. And it was probably two weeks and some coconut oil, I think. That is correct. So, That's correct. But I was so bad. My, I was willing to try anything. And then even though I was a little bit on the hungry side, because I get, it's kind of hard to eat enough. And all of a sudden, I was like, wait, I have energy. My inflammation is down. I'm sleeping better. We're on to something. And in retrospect, I would have switched the fish and let him have grass-fed beef at that time. Correct. too. But uh, it's only barely starting to be a thing, really, yeah. if you think about it. Okay, so you can read through those, but if you're just listening, so well-sourced protein, healthy fats, veggies. We are huge fans of greens juice, but we also have some supplements that are um, provide greens for when we're um, on the go, because sometimes we can't have our juicer with us in the wilderness. Um, more probiotic foods, better source grain. So that, what I basically mean about that is finding like a good rice. Now, early on, if you have extreme digestion problems, you can't even, you should probably cut your rice too. But what, it, what I more allude to here is that we substitute potatoes, sweet potatoes and squash for a lot of what most people use their bread for or to fill up with bread, we have that. And then of course the obvious no gluten and dairy, 
And again, it says at first, at some point you heal it up and you take control of your thoughts and then you can eat all this without the repercussions. So overall, like kind of quick list of all your go-to foods, um, meats, like they're high in omega-3, like we said, salmon, organ meats, grass-fed beef, avocado, all of coconut oil and them in regular form too. Uh, grass-fed butter is great for you avocados. Now, question is like, though, with grass-fed butter, if you have significant um, symptoms, that's a whole different story. But just to get healthy, if you're like, okay, I want to just take control of my nutrition, grass-fed butter is awesome. Um, leafy greens, berries, cruciferous veggies, so like your um, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, Brussels sprouts, beets, sweet potatoes, squashes, nuts, seeds, bone broth, probiotic foods like kombucha, sauerkraut, kimchi. And then I add it at the end because I think this is the secret is we make gluten-free homemade baked goods almost every day. That is our, that's what we rely on because personally I can't be as active as I am and just have a, like um, a meat patty and some veggies and salad. That's just not enough for me. So if you are really active, and you don't have significant gut issues, then you can try a little bit of it. I do not, I did not put buy gluten-free breads at the grocery store. Most of those are <laughs> horrible for you. Just a hint, if it says healthy on the box, it should automatically make you read the ingredients list. If you can't pronounce something, yeah, probably shouldn't be. And that's why Robin doesn't put gluten-free products. When you made something at home, you know what's in it. You have to source it. If you're, you're worth it and if you don't have the time, you need to learn to make some of this time or hire someone to help you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I should even specify the gluten-free homemade baked goods. A perfect example is we have something that we make called trail cookies. It's with almond flour and coconut flour, gluten-free oats, has some raisins and nuts in it, some banana. I think maybe I'm trying to think applesauce. The point being, it's like that type of thing where you're going back to basics and making some food. So here's a really easy, simple weekly meal plan that you can try. And for breakfast, make sure your coffee is always organic and um, freshly ground or have organic black or green tea, some eggs, free range eggs, some beans, uh, spinach, a gluten-free bread that we just talked or finding a, a healthy bar, um, sometimes, you know, when we're really busy and we're going to go surf or something, we just grab a boba bar and, and head out the door. Um, in the morning, the, sometimes I just skip breakfast. So I put bacon in the morning snack. Just a couple slices of bacon tend to be great for me. Um, I don't know how anybody wouldn't love bacon, but some people aren't fans of bacon. So others. If you're, if you're of the mindset right now that you're concerned about a cholesterol, then we, I encourage you to do some research. All of that was based on one, um, one research back in the early fifties, which was probably funded by the rock. Yeah. Rock, yeah. Funded incorrectly and really came to a conclusion. Uh, remember you have to have a double blind test to prove something and it did not have it. So you could just say there was money. Yeah. There's you. someone was, yeah, exactly. Uh, someone was, Someone had it in their pockets to shift us away from this. And so cholesterol is not the enemy. Inflammation and all of the things that we've talked about, negative emotions and um, bad, badly sourced food, that's really to blame. Sugar's to blame. And so I encourage you to go do that. That's not for this point. We're, if we're still selling you on that, you got to go back and do a little bit of work. Come back and digest this webinar later. Okay, so another like nuts, salami, avocado, hummus. The big thing to take away from that morning snack is that's there's a significant amount of fat in that in that morning snack. And that's really important. This is why keto gets to be so popular. However, most people who say they're keto are not keto because to truly be keto is um, something that most people can't even do because once you have a little bit of sugar, carbs, a little, even a little protein, you know, to be truly keto. ketogenic, ketogenic tendencies and high protein, paleo keto. I mean, if you want to talk names, that would be kind of the tendency. However, 
you're obviously eating like a human, a hominid, <laughs> you know? Um, lunch, a nice go-to is just stick with a monster salad, meaning a huge salad with protein and healthy fat. So you can put chicken on it, although I'm not a huge fan of, uh, chicken's hard to source. It really is hard to source. Even a lot of the organic chicken is not truly organic chicken. So chicken's great, but you gotta find a rancher or a farmer or whatever that has um, good chickens. Um, but whatever protein you want to add to it and like avocado and, you know, pine nuts or, and then also add more of your vegetables. It's a good opportunity to add bell peppers and broccoli and green onions and eat the rainbow. I was waiting for you to help me out with other things yeah. that I was forgetting, but. No, no, you I think you get the point. Um, and hopefully you're screen share this. A yeah. good one. Sometimes everyone feels that low in the afternoon and having just like a kombucha or your greens juice in the in the evening or sorry, in the afternoon might give you just that little bit of sugar that you need to like keep your momentum going, but make sure again, that you're following it with something with some fat. So almonds, walnuts, a bar that has fat, not a sugary bar. Um, something that's going to keep you, your blood sugar stable, but give you a little bit of a pick me up. Even sometimes we'll just have, you know, a little square of chocolate and then, you know, a slice of a really good hard cheese, um, a slice of salami, uh, dinner, half your plate should be meat, um, rice or potato and beans. So really that's a third, a third meat, a third, a rice or potato, a third beans, and then the other half with like grilled veggies or another salad. If you are not super full or sleeping, like we're about to talk about it, then you need to make that even more meat. You might need, if because I'm laughing because like Victor, he pretty much needs half a plate of meat and a half of half um, the other half to be veggies and beans. Would you that agree? That is correct. Yeah. And so there's some individuality and that's certainly something we do is, is adjust individually. We, as coach, as coaches, we adjust per the demands of the, of that individual, depends, yeah. figure out that specific. On your training program. Yeah. Oops. I did have a typo there. It says lunch, but I meant before bed if you need a snack like I know again our family's active so we need something later before bed if that's too much food but remember I did tell you overeat the good stuff first before you try to deprive yourself so that's another good opportunity that's when we have our trail cookies or sometimes we'll just get out a tub of almond butter and take a couple spoonfuls of almond butter sometimes we'll have some frozen berries and then follow it up with um some something that's more fat or protein based too uh scrambled eggs before bed sometimes is a really good thing also yeah. okay sleep victor loves to sleep so i'm gonna let him <laughs> talk about how to get better sleep well one of the biggest problems associated with anxiety um, and any type of burnout is that your circadian rhythm um, gets completely out of whack and i found myself personally when i was when i was going through my stuff that I felt best between six and 10 o'clock at night. And that's because I was so, I basically became inverted in general. When we wake in, awaken in the morning, our cortisol should be at its highest point. Um, we're trained to respond to the light. And that's why it's important to get outside and have some sunshine on you so that you get, establish that circadian rhythm. But with a lot of clients when they first start seeing me, their, their, their sleep cycles are all out of whack. And so it's absolutely essential to start retraining your body to adjust to a schedule. Now that as we record this, it's probably the longest, the shortest day of the year. And even then, um, it's so important to get outside and get that light to teach that pineal gland that it is morning. It is now create this hormone. And because your hormones get all out of whack, your endocrinology on a deeper level, including your testosterone and your estrogen, progesterone balance for women gets out of whack. And so the aim is really to get into bed and asleep by 1030. There's no way around it. Now, there are individual differences in how much sleep people need. And some of that is linked um, to some of the underlying programs that you're running. Technically, I've the more calm I am throughout my day, and that even means me working out, the less sleep I tend to need and, and more I wake up with alertness in the morning. So get into bed by, by 1030. Um, having a good balance. And I can't, 
I can't say this enough. A lot of people think sun's down, like time to not eat. And I'm gonna go, wow, that's like at six tonight. That's gonna be like five. There's no way I could have eaten enough to have good blood sugar, blood sugar balance throughout my evening, especially since we source. And I really kind of watch my total carbohydrate intake. I tend to do better on higher protein and fat. And so I have to have my last meal uh, before bed, you know, sometimes a half hour, 45 minutes before. Now that's not meaning you're having a three course meal, but eating a diet that's high in fat and protein for dinner is going to help you with the balancing your blood sugar regulation. If you're having a lot of simple starches and with dinner, what goes up must come down and that tends to be blood sugar related. So a lot of people will eat a, high, a, a diet rich in complex carbohydrates, which is okay. But if you're having high levels of anxiety, you're going through that a lot faster. So if you opt for good fat, good protein, it's more sustained blood sugar. And that's essential to keep you asleep. I find that with myself and my clients, if they manage their blood sugar, a lot of times the signals that they're getting, their stress signals, their body's waking them up in the middle of the night simply because their blood sugar drops. All right, so then that moves into making a morning routine to stimulate cortisol. The easiest way is to get out in the sun and um, and get a get a little bit of that day going. And so whether that's a walk, whether that's a workout, whether that is a um, breath work or meditation, I absolutely love doing that and connecting with that. Getting the habit of stimulating that my day is beginning, here we go, and this is what I'm going to do. Um, evening routine. You got to start shutting it down in some way, shape, or form. And it's very difficult with phones being the way it is and how connect connected. Now, look, I'm a digital. I work completely digitally. And so sometimes my last client is not too late. And so the last time I stare at my phone is too late. I, we have to learn to start disconnecting and connecting with a, a different brainwave, theta meditation, breath work, and cutting down electronics. So the easiest way to think about that is like, look, if you're not, if you're new to meditation and breath work, I'm like, I, I'm not just going to start a practice. Well, maybe you can start off by just disconnecting, reading, doing some light stretching, some qigong, some tai chi, a light yin yoga. Um, maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can just impact what you're digesting. I once had a client that swore up and down that he all he needed was four or five hours of sleep a night. And after further inspection, well, obviously he didn't need it more, but he wasn't getting it. I go, what do you usually watch before? Well, I'd like to watch UFC reloaded. I'm like, you will watch a UFC fight before you close your eyes to go to bed. And I go, don't you think that has a negative impact on your state? And he said, no. And I had him record himself sort of watching it. And, and then when he watched it back, he's like, oh yeah. And that's probably not good for me. And slowly we hacked our way to the point that he was getting more sleep. And lo and behold, the weight started coming off. Okay. Okay. So you've got your sleep's better. You're eating, putting good food into your body. You're aware of the thoughts. Now that's where we try to really um, encourage you to go to this next level. It is hard if you've never done meditation or breath work, quite honestly. Um, we don't, we used to take people through the workout part or have to track the, the food part, but now it seems like this is the thing that people struggle to do by themselves the most. Um, so I'm going to just cover some tips for how, how to approach meditating and why to approach meditating because meditating, the reason meditating is so important is to give us a break from our thinking mind and to bring awareness to of how much our thinking mind doesn't want to stop thinking. But a lot of times people uh, think of meditating as so foreign. It's like, I mean, I, I laugh because I think back to myself reading books about how to meditate. And I think of like, man, I wish somebody would just tell me to like, just, just sit still for a second, close your eyes and just notice all your thoughts and then go on with your day. Like, don't, don't make it a thing. Um, so by setting the right intention of, I'm just going to be aware, I'm just going to notice like really at first for meditating. Now we talk often, or I hear people say like, oh, you can meditate or pray. Well, the problem that I think if you, when you're praying, you're actively thinking, God, please help me with this. Hey God, this happened to me that you're actively engaging 
in a in in something and i know like some people do prayers where you're just reciting stuff and maybe you can be kind of mindless in there but you're still actively firing out into the world as opposed to trying to quietly observe and maybe even receive maybe like this we talk about often like receiving uploads from the universe when in our meditations and like you want to have the intention of allowing of noticing observing allowing things like that and in order to do that you don't have to sit cross-legged you can go lay on the floor you can whatever is going to limit your um thought process because if you're uncomfortable and you're just thinking about god my back hurts my back really hurts i'm so uncomfortable then you're not in a space where you can just kind of float outside your body and observe okay one of the easiest ways to make anything a habit is by putting it in your schedule daily um again i talked about comfortable position but also with the inviting meditate inviting meditation area like it's nice to have some bolsters and maybe like we have a sound bowl and a is it a tongue drum? Yep. And, you know, we play music. The kids love to meditate and they take turns like, hey, I'm going to pick the playlist for tonight. Um, things like that make it make it much more enjoyable. Have somebody do it with you. It's always nice when somebody sits there next to you. you guys obviously, I'm talking, but just feeling like you're in it together is a great thing to do. Um, a guided meditation, we have a ton. We have so many guided meditations. Um, but start small and be consistent. And if you really struggle with it, that's what we do as coaches. We guide people through meditating all the time, every day, lots of times. Um, breath work is an easier way for a lot of people, though, to start into meditating. Can one replace the other? I personally say no, um, but I'm idealistic. And <laughs> I think you need both. I think they're two totally different things. I think most people are going to be drawn towards one or the other. I know it's probably when you have less than 10 minutes, you're going to pick breath work. And I usually pick meditation, right? That is correct. And I, I find that I can, and one, and this is just alluding to a very small thing, um, a, a little physiology, nine out of 10 people that I've, I've worked with have some level of breathing dysfunction, meaning they are breathing in through their shoulders as if they're running again from that bear. And so even in that regard, if you're thinking it from that level, if you're breathing wrong, well, you're going to impact how you're thinking. And so uh, I really enjoy for myself when I feel like, oh, I'm kind of in that scattered brain move. Oh, here we go. And I can shift myself. So Robin has a beautiful list of, of breath work styles. And there's a t ton of information on all of these everywhere, but we'll touch base. Yeah, but... you can YouTube them. And most of them are on our YouTube too, I Correct. think, but uh, box breath is just uh, making inhale, hold, exhale, hold exactly the same. So you can do two second in, hold for two seconds, exhale for two, hold for two. So if you want to get it longer and longer, you can work up to four, six, maybe eight seconds of doing that box. You want to describe two more? Uh, two more breath is otherwise known as towel drying breath. Um, when you see monks breathing in the Himalayas, they can literally sit in the middle of winter with a wet towel on them and use a breath style that generates a ton of heat so much so that it dries the towel. And that's essentially working some movement in with beautiful belly breath. So as you breathe in and out through, through into the diaphragm, through the, into the abdomen, you're extending out the spine as if almost like looking up to the sun. And as you exhale, you're rounding like a scared cat and exhaling out, and then really fo forcing the energy down into the abdomen. Again, all of this is easier. We have plenty of tutorials, and there's a ton out there. Alternate nostril breathing. Go ahead, Robin. Well, these are a little faster, so I'm not going to talk through every single one yeah. other than just know, like, you can look it up, or you can do it with us. Um, that's another really effective one, especially if you have anxiety, is why I wanted to cue on that one, because it's a really good way of calming. Um you can breath of fire is another great one, especially if you feel low energy. Five, seven, eight is another holotropic breathing. Okay, now that's the one I really want to touch on because if you had asked me two years ago if we were going to be holotropic breathwork coaches and that we are going to be spending a lot of our time not, not um coaching squats and coaching this, I would have been like, no way. But this is what we do. And it's a really powerful way of clearing trapped energy and clearing trauma. And all of us have, and even if we haven't had significant trauma, we all have trapped energy in the form of past hurt and past pain. And this breath work is a really 
powerful way to release that calcification of energy that we crystallizations. Will, yeah, we can go into in another we still, video, but I'm yeah. gonna just give you the framework for all the things to to be happy and healthy. And then when you find like, okay, I need to go further, I'm ready to address and it's it's energetic healing, right? Yeah, yes, but it's a lot of times what's holding people what is holding people back from doing the things in terms of eating right and feeling motivated to exercise and to take control of their thought process. A lot of times it is that trapped energy, trapped emotion from the past that's getting in the way. So um, don't dismiss it as a, as a modality for your healing process, for your healing journey. It's definitely worth, worth trying at least once. All right, movement and play. So it's kind of weird to have all of these slides and to have one slide on <laughs> working out when Victor is the workout guy. Well, you know, first thing, if you've made it this far into this webinar, give yourself a little pat on the back because I know some of this can feel like oh, I've heard this, but all of a sudden we start clicking into some points. So you can do a little face yoga, circle the face, stretch out, look up and down, circle. Maybe you do a little neck roll and stay focused for me so that you can really get stay to the end so that you get all of it we're almost there we have evolved completely to the point that i don't talk about it as exercise because the body sees exercises guess what work stress stress and so it's very important that we reevaluate and redefine what exercise is and movement is more what i like to diagnose and try to recommend for my clients and recommend even for myself what do i feel because movement is medicine Movement is medicine. And so we have, our goal with movement is to keep you energy free, uh, energy free, injury free, injury free. And so workouts in the way that we see them in the past, it's not about getting in the gym and destroying a workout. While I still do that, I have to have the right endocrinology to allow me to do that. So when you go into the gym, it's about for initially first taking care of injuries. And so applying the right rehab for that area. And generally I will use that as the warm up for someone. So if you have knee issues, guess what? Go in, do a little, some stuff for your knee, right? So take care of it. Then go into a minimum effective dose. What do I need based on my goals? So for me, uh, let's take something like jujitsu. Okay, so I have a little bit of a knee thing. I go in, warm up, warm up using my rehab. And then I want to trigger the, the best, most effective workout that allows me to enjoy my sports. I'm prepared for my sports. So what is the minimum amount? Well, I want to be able to push, pull, hinge, squat, and uh, carry uh, are, are sort of the most effective ways to do that. Each individual is completely different based on what they have in their experience. So you want to be able to do that in two to three sets, get in about 15 to 20 minutes, and be done with it. The idea is to shift an endo get an endocrinological shift. If you're doing your, your workouts right, you feel invigorated and you're creating a GH spike, which in turn has the positive hormones. Remember the stress talk that we had before. That was about cortisol being high. When cortisol is high, testosterone is low. When cortisol is high, your estrogen progesterone um, balance is going to be out of whack. So a workout or movement should help you balance that. Can that be done in the gym? Yes. Can that be done on a rock wall? Yes. Can that be done even mountain biking? Absolutely. Be prepared for the sports. And the trick is to be resilient and adaptable for life personally. Sports are amazing, but you also want to be able to have lots. We live in this wonderful time. You should have one, lots of wonderful physical movement experiences. And then my favorite, flow state. So flow state is um, interesting because it's really the, the idea of when we are doing something just for this, just for the joy of it. Like when I go to surf, I'm not thinking about, oh man, what's my target heart rate at? Oh, am I burning up calories? Oh, am I getting enough reps of paddling? I'm usually thinking survive and then like fun. Um, so when we can chase flow state, we can shift one, our brain waves, which is really, really uh, important in getting out of beta. When you're in beta, your brain wave, you're in stress. When we can get in more alpha and theta and gamma brain waves, that's also going to upregulate our DNA, improve our immunity, help our our brain function, everything's just going to click when you're in flow state more often. Um, now, 
a lot of times people are like, well, I'm just too old for that. And I'm going to tell you, that's not true. There are so many people, you might've just not done it for a long time, but everybody, everybody can chase flow state. My grandma who's 95. She's going for flow state. She's still driving herself to this pool to, so she can swim and be in her flow state where, you know, time stands still and she forgets where she's at. And remember, words are spells. So be careful what you're saying. A lot of what we say, oh, like, I'm too old for that. Where'd that come from? <laughs> um, flow state also it helps your recovery. So if you're, you know, if we do train in the gym hard and then we want to go and, you know, spend a day mountain biking or rock climbing. Yeah, the body, the, if you get into flow state, the body, the, the endocrinology is completely different than a workout. And I can say that unequivocally from someone who has lifted weight since he was in middle school. When I go on a bike ride, when I go even for a hike, like my body perceives that a little bit differently by default, I'm actually triggering different neurotransmitters than I am when I'm training. Now I do get a pump and I do have that workout high, but it's a little bit different to getting into flow state. So really broach that. And flow state helps you anytime you're out playing, you're connecting with um, yourself and really with your inner child. So that's also going to create a positive form. And you should be giddy. <laughs> okay. So the big question is, as we get into this next slide. How fast do you want results? How quickly can you do this? Because I got to tell you, I just gave it to you all. You've got this. I want you to get this. You don't need me. You don't need Victor. Only if you want to get it done faster. But you can do it on your own. Okay? Go I'm gonna review the five steps so that you ingrain it in your mind. Stop the bleeding by figuring out what is the root of your stress addiction. Is it your programming? Is it your schedule? Well, they're all related to your programming, but get real clear on where that stress thought cycle is coming from and make changes. Okay? Two, follow the Nutrition Made Simple guidelines so that you can heal your gut health. Then you'll be able to go back to eating more diversity of foods. You still should stick to all whole foods even after it, but to really get those uh, that leaky gut under control, you have to take some, maybe a little more drastic measures at first. Um, get your sleep back to cir good circadian rhythms so that you can not only wake up and have energy, but maybe eventually wake up excited to start each day. Do your meditation and breathing every day to ground down into the present moment and to check in with what is on your mind. What are those thoughts that are racing? And then add play and flow state. If you can do that every day, if you can eat good nutrition, have healthy gut, sleep right, meditate and breathe and go do something fun, you know, every day, it you're going to live so a really, really long, happy, enjoyable life. Like it's, there's nothing, I kind of say it as if like, duh, but there's nothing better than, than just feeling healthy. And feeling empowered, to feel in power in your sense of self, in who you are. But if you want to do it faster and better, I can't think of two more qualified people than us because we've been doing this for a long time and we walk the walk. And I think the truth is, is that most people um, approach it from the wrong side of the equation. I think most people approach health and happiness from a you're not enough you need to do more and instead we're kind of here telling you like hey all these things around you kind of it's their it's really their fault but it's your chance to be empowered and take control of it it you know it's not it wasn't your fault if you didn't attach really well when you were a kid and you felt ignored and you had this programming running or that you know, you were told, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. You work too many hours. Now you have a house and a mortgage and kids that need to go to school and all these other things. We get it. We totally get it. But if you go back for a second to all those lists, it's very doable, right? To, to you said do, it was simple. It's simple. Like you just eat that weekly meal plan. It was really simple. You do a few habits at night so that you sleep good. You do a few habits in the morning so you start to train yourself to wake up refreshed. You spend 10, 15 minutes doing your meditation and breath work, and you carve out an hour of your day to go do something fun. It's not time consuming, really. It's not that much work. You can hack it down. But what the big thing is that 
you have something special to give. And what we see is that the problem is, is people aren't looking at it from their thoughts are keeping them trapped with excuses instead of like, oh my gosh, these thoughts aren't even mine. These are like my amygdala is hijacked or like I'm feeling these emotions, but you know what? That's not the emotion I really want to feel. Why are these emotions keep popping up? It's almost like my brain, somebody took over my brain and it's not my brain anymore. And that's kind of what happens, but we can take back your brain. We can approach it from a different, different side where we look at the thoughts first. Um, one of the biggest thing Victor says this all the time. Um, and then I turn around and I say it to Victor, you're too close to the problem to see it. But he always tells people, you're too close to the problem to see the root issue. So the real, like the real reason it's important for you to let somebody help you is because the reason you're probably in the situation you're at today is because you've been so close to the problem that you're not necessarily seeing it. So did you want to add to that? Being able to step back, step back far enough, start with a hundred feet, a thousand feet, and then eventually take it to a 30,000 foot overview and go like, why am I really, why am I really telling myself these stories? Why am I, do I keep getting stuck in the exact same spot over and over? Or you keep replaying the same play like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to the gym every day. I'm going to do an hour of cardio. I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to do high intensity intervals. Only to go, wait, you've tried that a bunch of times and failed. What else is holding you back? Because an intelligent person can kind of go, hmm, that ain't working anymore. And truthfully, I don't even like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I think patterns, you know, your your symptoms, your anxiety and stuff, those are all really great um, gifts because they, they allow you to catch something before it's out of hand. But so are patterns. So if you look back at your life and go, wow, I've been here before for us, or it's right before Christmas. Um, if, if every December 21st, you get to this point where you're experiencing anxiety or depression, is it a pattern? If it's a pattern, there's a good chance that you're just so close to the problem that you're not noticing what the root programming issue is. And that is really where we're different as coaches is being able to see that root programming issue and and then give you steps to uh, to address it and to clear it that's why i said when that holotropic breath work it's such a it's such a fast way to get to whatever that underlying issue is uh victor touched on number two why you know doing it with us is faster and better is because people have a lot of ego hung um attached to their food and sometimes you just need a coach to tell you like hey we're, we need to eat this this week and then we'll eventually eat this another week. But I don't think, I, I doubt that you don't know what to eat, that it's a function more of being able to fix the things in number one so that you have the space in your life to eat number two yeah, or to follow number two, which is to eat the nutrition made simple. Number three, your dopamine fix. So in um it was on number three. Oh yeah the sleep so sleep i was like wait but sleep comes down to number one for most people they agree they know too like oh i should sleep eight hours i should be in bed earlier but we don't right because of that dopamine fix and that dopamine fix you know you got to stay up and watch youtube which i'm guilty of or you um you're trying to Bing squeeze in something squeeze in one more thing or you're stuck on instagram scrolling whatever that dopamine fix is that's getting in the way of your sleep pattern is more than likely attached to number one so you can already see how number one is going to fix number two and number one is going to fix number three meaning getting close enough to that programming issue that is causing the ego defense um Number four is that with the breath work and the guided meditation, you absolutely can do it on your own. In fact, even if you worked with us, I'd still say, hey, do more on your own because there's probably a lot, a lot to you that you just haven't had time to shed light to. And sometimes the best thing when we're in dark places is to just shed light on that darkness. We don't always, sometimes just by shining the flashlight on it, you can fix it just be just through awareness. But also we do um, techniques in our breath work and meditation to help you go a little bit deeper in the subconscious. I think the heartfelt message too I want to send you is, you know, as parents ourselves, as human beings ourselves that have worked um, 
in the industry of serving people, we provide a very safe space for that. Interesting. I feel like I did a breathwork session with um, a guy who has Tourette's, a kid really who had Tourette's <clears throat> a couple days ago. And he was like, I've never felt so seen before in my life. And it was a one hour breathwork session. That was it. That was all we did. But it's because I know it's much, much deeper than that, that I could take him into his really deep levels of his self subconscious that he's been blocking that, you know, might be part of the root problem of why his energy system is hijacked. Yeah. Hijacked. yeah. And then I'm going to say that I, honestly, it's Victor's all for number five. When you, when you're on number five, it's all about Victor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, injuries, I always tell people, it's just, it's sort of like the anxiety when you, when you broach us in coaching, I always go, Hey, what, if I saw this anxiety, what, what is it you want to do? Like, oh, I just, I, I can't think about that. I'm like, well, in about a week, I'm going to be solving this because we're going to do this, this, and this. It's going to be gone. And we're going to be like on to bigger, better things. And the same thing with an injury. I'm like, oh, this back's been holding you back. Okay. In about a week or two, we're going to be on to bigger and better things. Um, injuries and the, the nuance that comes with creating just enough support, coaxing that a healthy movement, um, it's how I made my living since 1997. It's actually simple, but you have to be able to interpret what the body's telling you. And then, um, so this leads us to our next point. Okay. So next step for you, do it on your own or do it faster with us. But first we just want to do a discovery call before we, you get all into it. Let's, let's evaluate where you're at. Let's look at your musculoskeletal system, your digestive health, health, your emotional wounds or some traumas, your energetic imprint, where you're at with your relationships and career, your life right now, your schedule, your sense of purpose. And we'll talk about what strategies to implement and what would serve you best. Um, it's really better for us to just game plan the whole thing first. And for most people, I think when you're at this space in your life, you know, it's really important for you to feel hurt. It's really important for you to feel understood. And I think that's the biggest thing that we do in a discovery call is sit down and make sure that we aren't sitting here telling you, this is what you need to do. Instead, no. we're like, hey, where are you at? And let's pick the what we can work on first to get your head above water. And then we can start swimming to islands instead of asking you to swim to some islands with a whole bunch of anchors tied to your ankles. And, and these discovery calls are absolutely essential because one, you're we're building rapport with you. You're starting to see like, oh, this is what this person is. This is what I thought, but wow, they're compassionate and have experience and they really have my best interest because that's really what we do. We could not say we've been coaches for 30 years if we had not been on the right track at helping people. And so you're going to get that. And that discovery call, it could be just us take, giving you flight and saying, you know what? We think you got this. You don't need to necessarily go to that next level but we can also read through and go you need me for this next level all right we hope you guys enjoyed this and we look forward to seeing you in your discovery call did something happen when it was <laughs>